Hello. Um, so I'm back again, having a look at the rest of the devices in Bitwig. Um, today is going to be about the Bit8 device, uh, which is the quantizer, sampler rate reducer, gate shaper thing. Um, just before we start, we are hurtling towards a thousand subs. So if you enjoy this, if you get anything out of it, give me a sub. Give me a like as well. It really helps me out. Thanks a million. Um, okay, so before we launch into looking at all the controls in detail, I'm just going to show you some of the applications that you might use it for, so uh, different effects that you could use it for. So, uh, first of all, I've got this uh, patch here, which just let me turn the bit 8 off on it. So it's just a sine wave. Let me go up just in case you're listening on a phone or something. So it's just a sine wave, okay? But then watch when I turn on the bit 8 here and play it. Okay, so that's including some stuff in the wet effects and stuff like that. Uh, then another application I've got here, so I've got this uh, like wimpy kind of snare. Sounds like somebody's stepping on, I don't know, a bag of crisps or something. And uh, then if I add in the bit eight chain here, you know, it's uh, bringing it up a bit. That's just adding more noise into the signal, distorting it a bit, stuff like that. Uh, then I've got another one here, which is a kick. Uh, it's a kick I've made in E-Kick here. So it sounds like that. And then for more attack and stuff, we're just going to add in this bit 8. So. Okay, so then I've got another one here. And I will go over how to do all these. I'm just going to show you the controls afterwards. Uh, this is an organ. Let me just turn that off. So this is basically just adding noise into the signal. You know, kind of retro kind of lo-fi vibe stuff uh, then I've got an example here of using it on an effect so so we've got this delay on this uh, hat the the e hat pattern that I've drawn here so I'm just gonna show you here if I turn up the mixer You can do that in reverbs and stuff. And um, what have I got here? Oh yeah, so if the last one I've got to show you here is uh, this is a bass, just a bass line. So it's a really simple patch here in Polymer. Kind of sounds, you know, not great. A bit wet. Um, so let's add in this uh, multi-band effects and all that's on here is just a bit eight on the high band, so. And without. So, hopefully that has made it clear some of the things that you can use Bit8 for. Um, just before we launch into how you might achieve different stuff like that, uh, let's just have a quick look at the actual controls inside it and, um, yeah, kind of understand them a bit better just in case you don't. So, um, Bit8 has a few sections here. So, you got the um, this section, which is sample rate reduction, jitter, chance. That's all based around the sample rate. Then you've got this gate section. Uh, which is gate in the waveform. I'm going to show you on a sine wave what that actually does. You got this middle part, which is a shaper, which is like a clipper distortion, and there's some like wave folding stuff like that in here. Then you got a quantizer, which is sort of similar to, to this uh, clock reduction, but what it's doing is it's uh, sort of squarifying the waves. And you got a couple of different modes here, um, which I'll go into in a minute. And you have a stereo option, and uh, this is the amount. So we'll start with the simpler ones. So the simplest here is the gate. Okay, so I've got a sine wave here and I'm just passing it through the grid here for the oscilloscope and the the module I'm going to start with is the simplest one which is this gate. So what the gate does is uh, here's the zero crossing and then here's the sine wave traveling through the zero crossing. So this is everything that's at a positive polarity and this is negative and then positive and negative and positive and negative. What this does is it uh, acts like a gate which controls volume and it basically zeroes out everything that's close to the zero crossing here. So you can see as I push it up more All it's doing is it's it's setting 
within a certain parameter close to the zero crossing, it's setting everything to zero, so. And then eventually it ends in silence. So you can use that to shape the wave a bit. That's pretty simple. That's probably the simplest element, but if you mix it with other stuff, say we bring in a bit of quantization here, drag that down, maybe add in shaper, or maybe even a folder here. So you can very quickly get some interesting wave shapes with that. So let's set everything back to zero here. Uh, the next part is the shaper section here. So the shaper is basically just a, a distortion. So if you go here to the clip, this is basically just hard clip and everything. Let me bring the level down on that just a touch. So we can see the shape better. So that's basically just hard clipping the sine wave and squareifying it. Then you've got these sentence here. Uh, this one will get rid of all the negative polarity. So you see everything under the zero crossing is gone. And then this next one here will take everything that's below the zero crossing and move it above the zero crossing. So the next section we got here is the fold. This is a wave folder. Sounds a bit like FM. And the exact same thing goes here. So if we select this, it's just gonna delete everything below the zero crossing. And then if we select this, it's gonna move everything below the zero crossing, above the zero crossing. So it's basically rectifying the signal. Then we got uh, wrap. Let me switch it back to the main one here. This is sort of like uh, if you use serum, it has a mirror, a mirror mode. It's kind of similar to that. Sorry, it's probably a bit loud there. Let me pull that back a bit. Um, so the only thing you want to be careful about with the wrap is it tends to get. Uh, it's a bit. There are points, see, where it just starts to squareify the wave, so it can sound a bit jumpy. So when you're modulating it, you might want to stick within certain parameters so that you're not getting that kind of jumpy effect. Uh, same thing again. You got those different modes here, but the actual wrapping will ignore that to an extent. So once it wraps, it goes below. So you can get really weird wave shapes with that. So yeah, that's that. Um, then... Probably the next section to look at is the the sampler rate reduction. So basically what this is doing is, as the sine wave is playing, let me reset that and turn this off. So as the sine wave is playing, it's going over and above the zero cross and, and it kind of looks smooth and it's great, you know. What this is doing is it's saying, I don't really want to like look at the sine wave constantly to see what it's doing. So I'm going to look every, I don't know, 6.82 hertz you know so what's happening is is it's kind of guessing what's in between those so it ends up as a square wave because it's just going okay it was here last and now it's here and now it's here and now it's here instead of going no 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 that's the best way i can explain it so you can see it has the effect of squaring off the wave at a certain frequency uh jitter here is taking this clock cutoff amount and it's uh, it's just randomly sort of changing it around like this. So it's doing that really fast. So as you can hear, say if we're like that and then we have no jitter on, it's kind of stable sounding. And as we go up, it gets kind of noisier and messier. Right, so that's that. Then we've got chance. So what chance is doing is at the very top, it's saying, okay, everything that's happening here, I'm gonna have a look at it. And then as you bring it down, what it's doing is if we look here, what chance does is it's a percentage of the samples selected at random that will be heard. So it's selectively not playing little bits of the sample in the waveform, which has the effect of kind of adding noise to the signal because it's random. So as you go down, it just gets really noisy. 
So yeah, that's the uh, the clock, the sample rate reduction section. Then finally, we've got the the um, quantization section here. So uh, you've got two kind of regular modes here, which is uh, just straight up quantization where it squarifies the wave. And the primary difference between these two that you'll hear audibly is this this tends to more impart a pitch onto the signal. And this is really kind of just squaring it off. Now, the difference between off zero and on zero is just the way that that quantization is placed against the grid. So similar effect, but slightly different um, in terms of how it actually winds up happening. So then we've got these last two here, which is diffusion and dither, okay? So diffusion is pretty much doing the same thing, but it's not doing it evenly. It's, it's taken, if you can see here, it's taken this squarifying concept and it's kind of randomizing it a little bit which has a kind of a harsher effect. And then you've got a brightness control here. Which makes it kind of noisier. So that's that. Then the last thing you've got here is this button, which is the quantization in squared do domain. Performs quantization in the squared domain. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know what that means, but let's have a look. So, so let's go back to the regular. So it's, it's changing up sort of how it's quantized and it seems to be maybe setting it against the zero crossing or something like that, so that it's more even. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really understand that. I did look it up in the manual, but I couldn't really find it, but it sounds different. So let's move on to stuff I do understand. So then finally you've got dithering, which is doing the, the same thing pretty much, but it's adding in noise. So it's quantizing the signal, but it's also adding a noise signal. And then you got a stereo button here, which is gonna make that noise that it adds in stereo. And um, that's basically it. That's everything that you can do within the bit eight. Uh, the last few two controls you got here is the mix, which is how much of the original signal is coming through. So let's bring that in and then you can mix it in. The uh, other thing is the stereo width. So if you're putting through it, do you want it to be wide or do you want it to be more mono sounding? And then you've got wet effects, which is going to affect um, the effect itself. So whatever the wet signal is, is going to be affected by whatever you put in there, which I will show you an example of now. So this is the bass sound that I showed at the start. Um, the bass sound is just a sine wave coming from Polymer, which I will open up to show you. It's just a sine wave. So this is an example of Distort. So let me turn off what's in the wet effects because an awful lot of what's actually happening here isn't to do with bit 8, but it's just an example of how you might use it. So, so what I'm doing is I'm adding in, see that I'm using this dither to add in a bit of noise, which I have stereo, and I'm also shaping it quite a bit. And then I'm bringing in this, this, uh, this clock down as well, and it just has the effect of distorting distorting the sine wave that I'm putting through it. So now what you can do is you can take that signal and you can add the, say you want your straight sine wave in there as well. You can pull the mix down and then add in effects here that kind of filter. So, so a big part of what's happening here is the vocoder. So I'm sort of modulating the f formant amount here and I'm, um, I'm modulating, I think, the brightness there as well, and the cutoff filters, and the bands, and the band width. And then I'm saturating that as well, over here with the saturator. Right, and if I turn off, um, say I turn the mix down, we'll get more sine wave. 
and we're just affecting that wet distorted signal. So that's one way that you can use it, sort of a more complex way, I guess, with other effects. Then I've got this snare here that I already showed you. So this snare, just, you know, you probably just wouldn't use it, but say you had a snare and you wanted to beef it up a bit, um, you can involve the bit eight in the chain here. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I've got an EQ5 here that's just boosting the frequency, the fundamental frequency. Then what I'm doing with the bit eight is kind of interesting. So I'm using this dither to actually add in a noise tail. So if I turn it off, you can hear it's kind of very fundamentally. And then once I add in the bit eight, it's got more of a kind of rattle and a, a noise sound. All I'm doing here is um, using a, an ADSR to modulate in that noise and add a bit of jitter and a little bit of distortion. And then I can control how long that tail is by uh, changing the decay of this ADSR. And I could also change the mix and stuff like that if I wanted to kind of vary how much of the noise signal is coming in. So similar concept here with the kick. So we've got this kick that's, you know, it's got a good low end, but the high end isn't so good. And this is more of an example of adding in a bunch of different stuff. So I'm creating a bit of noise here with the quantization for the initial part of the kick. But I'm also hitting it with a bit of clipping and I'm downsampling a bit to kind of make it grittier. So. So you can hear it's an awful lot grittier when I'm adding in that distortion and the noise. So I'm also controlling this with an ADSR, which lets me control the transient of the kick a bit better. So you can hear here. So there's lots of options. I actually really like um, using bit 8 as a kind of a weird transient shaper a lot, especially on drums. So the last one I've got here is Oregon. This is super simple. It's not the last one. There are two more. Um, so, <laughs> so Oregon I've got here. And this is just really subtle, I suppose, what you would expect a lo-fi plugin to be used for. I'm just lo-fying the sound a bit. So I've got the sample rate reduced a little here. And I've got this chance pulled down, so that's adding in some noise. And I'm actually quantizing, quantizing the signal a little bit as well, so. Now, that's a bit extreme. You'd probably put it in a bit lighter than that. But just to show, you can do that kind of, I guess, vinyl crackle-ish kind of effect with it too. Um, and that's all it is. That's just using the base, basic controls. There's no kind of other effects at work there or anything like that. Uh, this e hat is just basically to show you that you can use it. You can use it within, um, you know, say a feedback effects here as well. So, you know, the reverb or the delays. You could have a modulating. You could have a modulating bit eight. It's kind of degrading the signal as the delay feeds back. And then how this is set up is going to vastly change how it sounds. And of course you can change up the modes here and stuff. So let's switch, um, let's make this a bit more extreme. So yeah, you can do that to a reverb, you can do it to a delay, uh, it's pretty cool. And the final thing I just wanted to show you was um, the idea of just using it as basically a distortion unit. So I've got this bit eight here. And basically, I'm just using it as a distortion. I'm not really using the lo-fi element of it at all, so. Oh, sorry, let me turn that whole train on there. So I've got the off zero set here. Um, I've got this set pretty high up. So we are lo-fi in a bit. I've got the wave folding turned on. I've got the gate. So what I'm doing here really is I'm, I'm wave shaping it with these various elements. So this is adding in a bit of squarifying. This is kind of squarifying it as well. This wavefold is doing sort of an FME kind of um, wavefolding effect. 
the gate here is changing it quite a lot as well. So you can use it to thin it out a lot. And the sample rate reduction is kind of adding a, a high end to it. This actually isn't doing a whole lot, but it's in there. I decided I wanted to do it. And then, of course, you can mix that. Yeah. So that's basically it. Um, I hope that that was informative to you. Um, if it wasn't, I'm sorry. Um, but there's a few different ways you can use the bidet. I looked for kind of a comprehensive video on bidet and there, there's a couple, but I kind of wanted to go really in depth on it because I think it's one of the better effects in Bitwig. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, leave a like, leave a subscribe. Let me know what device you want me to cover next as well. It'll probably be either the sampler or the vocoder unless people decide otherwise. Thank you.